Hey guys, this week's video is um, all about tax deductible expenses. So what expenses are you allowed to offset against your business? This video covers uh, sole traders and partnerships particularly. Um, I will cover a, a few of the different nuances with a company, but it's generally aimed at sole traders and partnerships. So those that are not an incorporated company. Um, so I think the first place to start is when you're thinking about what's allowable or not allowable from a tax deductible expense is looking at and having your your mind any costs that are incurred wholly and exclusively for running your business so would you have incurred that cost if you were not running your business that's the way to think about it so if you start at that point the reason you is that's the, that's the case with tax law um, but I think if you if you work on that basis, so you think about any costs you might have incurred where you would not have incurred them if you were not running your business. So I think if I if we start basically how a set of accounts looks. So the top line of your accounts is your turnover or your income um, or your sales. And if you've got multiple sources of income streams um, or sales, you might have those broken down into different categories. So for example, for my business, um, for our company, our top line is turnover, but then we have that break broken down into whether we're doing accounts work, whether we're doing consultancy work, whether we're doing um, financial uh, reports and management consultancy, whether it's self-assessment tax returns. So we break it down like that, we subcategorize it, and that's that helps with my analytics um, and when we're working through things as a team. Um, and then that all adds up to the total turnover. Then next you have cost of sales. So your cost of sales reduce your your turnover to give you gross, gross profit. So um, for example, in my business, my cost of sales, the main cost of sales for us is where we pay uh, company's house fees on behalf of a client. So for example, that could be the confirmation statement each year. So your, your top line is turnover, then you deduct your cost of sales. So if you're in a business where you are providing goods, um, you may have your turnover will be your sales of your product, but your cost of sales might be the cost of the raw material, buying those raw goods in before you add your markup um, and pass on, pass on the costs to your uh, customers. Um, and that gives you your gross profit. And that's often you will be asked if you're someone's talking to you about your business, what's your gross profit margin? Um, and then what we have is your expenses. So these can be operating and admin expenses. And these are general expenses that you will incur running the day-to-day -day business. Um, and it's generally the same whether you're a company or an um, unincorporated business, such as a sole trader or a partnership. But I will focus on this more on sole traders and partnerships. So first of all, remember, wholly and exclusively, would you have incurred those costs if you were not running that business? I think that's your starting point. And then kind of working through um, general things that you would, uh, would expect to see. So advertising and marketing. So that could be your any advertising and marketing. So that could be anything on Insta, um, TikTok, any adverts, Facebook, if you use Facebook. Um, that could also include things as, as anything you might have published in an article, magazines, um, if you use any kind, if you use no, newspaper advertisements, for example, good lags, all those kind of things fall under advertising and marketing. I think if you're attending um, networking events, slight grey area here, but if you're going and you're promoting your business and the purpose of that meeting is solely and utterly to promote your business, um, network and create, generate more leads, uh, um, advertising and marketing. Uh, then you might have your bank fees, um, any costs of running your bank account. This could be a nominal amount each month, um, but it also could be any um, other additional charges that if you've, say, overdrawn, those, those costs are allowed and are deductible. Um, for us, one of the things, what we call books and periodicals, it sounds quite ancient, but if we um, purchase any books, um, that we also include that as our online disc online um, periodical subscriptions. So anything like that. So you might uh, subscribe to a trade magazine. It doesn't have to be in paper. It can be online. Trade magazines, things like that. Anything that's directly and wholly and exclusively for running your business. Uh, so that's uh, just a quick summary there. We've got advertising and marketing, bank charges, for us books and periodicals um, and then we've got um, you might have something like consulting fees um, and that's outsourced 
So for example, if we have a particular project where we don't have the skill set to cover that for a client, um, we outsource to a specialist and um, that outsource, we cost that as consultancy fees. They're a tax deductible expense for our business. So you may bring on board, um, for example, someone to do your YouTube, um, a consultant that might help with that. Um, that's tax deductible expense because again, it's pulling exclusively for your business. Um, then we have wages and salaries. So this is often for most businesses one of the biggest costs that we have. And these are tax deductible expenses. There are slight nuances which you wouldn't need to go in. I'm not going to go into here. Um, but if you've not paid a member of staff at year end, you need to flag that up to your accountant just to make sure that they're aware of that for whatever reason that is. You do need payroll in place under the real time reporting, so that's RTI. So if you are bringing a member of staff on board, you need to make sure that you're either running your own payroll, if you feel confident that you know the laws, um, if not, um, you outsource it to your accountant or a payroll bureau. It's not a lot of money and the costs of outsourcing that is a tax deductible expense. Um, on the wages, just a heads up on this, um, if you are paying children, so if you are paying your son or daughter to help out in your business, you need to be aware that they need to be paid a reasonable rate for what they're doing. Um, and you cannot employ children under 14 years old. And there's a case law which is called Dollar and Dollar versus Lion, which is basically a farming business where he they paid all their children and it was apparent uh, when it went to tribunal that the only child that was properly working um, was one of the older sons that was over 14 years old. Everyone else was being paid money to basically avoid tax. So you need to be aware and conscious about that. Um, next, um, I think is insurance costs. Um, obviously insurance costs are um, a deductible expense because you need, you may well need premises insurance, public liability insurance, um, employee insurance. So um, their insurances, you might need some other cover as well. All your insurances are a tax deductible expense. Any interest that you pay, so for example, if you took out a C-bills or a bounce back loan um, when they were available, they are tax deductible expense. It's the interest element, not the capital, the interest element. Um, additionally, um, the if you put a loan into your business, and this is more for companies, um, and you wish to charge the company interest, uh, the separate reporting that needs to be done, so you need to flag that up as soon as you're thinking about doing that to your accountant so that the relevant reporting can be dealt with and um, paperwork sent to HMRC. But um, interest on that loan that you've introduced to the business, um, or if you've taken out a loan, any loan that's relevant to running the business, uh, then the interest is tax deductible. Um, so we call that interest on qualifying loans. Um, mobile phones and telecoms, so they're tax deductible as well. Um, however, if you are a sole trader um, or a, a partnership and you have two mobile phones, you want to get tax relief on one um, because why do you need two mobile phones to run your business? It's just one that you get tax relief on. Um, IT um, software and consumables, often what can be called computer running costs in your accounts when they're prepared. Um, so for us, that's things like zero subscriptions, um, any software that you may subscribe for, um, Microsoft, MS365, um, anything like that, Google Docs, all of those are tax deductible expenses, obviously where it's been used for running your business. Um, and then pension costs. Now pension costs, this doesn't apply for you if you're running a partnership or a um, A, a sole trader because that sits on your tax self-assessment tax return um, but the pension cost for a company um, is um, a, a tax deductible expense as long as it's for a registered scheme um, so they're de tax deductible um, postage stationary printing things like that as long as it's relevant to the business um, event hire and that's this is a little bit of an odd one um, if you are hosting an event, the event hire itself is tax deductible. However, the food and drink element falls under entertaining. I'm going to cover entertaining at the end because that's that's quite a grey area. It's not, but a lot of people think it is. 
Um, so you just need to be aware of that if you're running an event. Um, accountancy fees, any, any legal and professional fees, the legal fees that are not tax deductible are where it's not relevant to the day-to-day -day running of your business. So if you're a company, you may have, for example, put shareholders agreement in place. Those legal costs are not tax deductible um, because it's not for running the day-to-day -day business, that's for the business structure. Um, rent, heat and light. So if you have um, premises that you either, you, if you rent premises, um, then the rent's tax deductible, so as any associated costs such as council tax or rates, heat and light, uh, again insurances. However, if you are running your business from say home, um, then you can have an element of your home running costs. Uh, there's two ways you can do it. You can work it on square footage of the entire home. So you could work out square footage of your home and say, well, actually my office space or the, the areas of the business, which I'm solely using, uh, areas of the property, which I'm solely using for the business, that element, um, you could work out what square footage is that is over the entire square footage of the house. Um, and then you would work out the costs of things like your council tax, light and heat, mortgage interest, not the capital repayments, just the interest element. And you can also then work out, for example, the portion of your broadband costs. So again, I'll just run over that. So if you're running your business from, say, home, what you can do is, there's two ways of doing this. The first way is to work out what the square footage or the square meterage of your entire property is. And then say you have a home office, you could say that home office is exclusively used for running my business. So therefore, um, the square footage of that over the uh, the square footage of the entire uh, property, and then you could then multiply that up by the interest element of the mortgage. Um, if you're renting your property, all of the rent, uh, light and heating costs, um, broadband and telecommunication, and council tax. So all those can be a tax deductible expense. Um, and when you get your accountant to work out your accounts, give them a breakdown of how you've worked that out. Alternatively, and this is the way we tend to go, we say how many rooms in the property, because a lot of people don't know what the square footage of each room is or square meterage. Um, so say you've got seven rooms in the property and you're running your business out of one home office. So it's one seventh of your mortgage interest, one seventh of your uh, light and heating costs. So that's that section. Um, I'm just running through these, making sure I'm not missing anything out. Um, repairs and maintenance. Now this is a little bit of an odd one. Repairs are allowable deductible expense. However, you have to ensure we don't know if it's repairs or maintenance um, or capital. So if it's capital expenditure, it doesn't reduce your tax bill on your profit and loss account. That sits in your balance sheet and you will potentially get what's called capital allowances for that expenditure on um, capital expenditure. So for example, um, what we would class as a repair is um, if you've got a toilet on your premises and it needs repairing because say, the system's broken, that's a repair. However, if you add a new toilet and uh, bathroom to some premises and it's not replacing an existing one and there's no, not one there and you want to add a new one, that's capital expenditure. So general rule of thumb there, if you're replacing something that's already there or fixing something that's already there, it's a repair. And if it's a new or an enhancement of something that's already there, it's generally capital expenditure. There is lots of nuances on this and there is lots of case law. This is absolutely and utterly something that your accountant will be able to guide you on and help you. And you give, give them specific examples um, when you're doing things. But generally, the rule of thumb is to work by um, if you're repairing something, it's fixed, you already got it there, um, or you're replacing it with something like for like, and if it's capital expenditure, you're replacing something that's better model, better version, and it's um, it's a new 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 item. Um, right, closing, work, closing. I'm trying to think where we get most of the questions. So closing. If it is work where, um, if you're a property developer and you have um, a certain type of boots, protective clothing, um, hard hats, all that kind of thing. It's absolutely 100%. So if it's safety, um, protective clothing are completely allowed. Uniforms are allowed. However, clothing for work and uh, so for example, if you are a gym instructor and you are running a private gym, if you are not in uniform and you're in your 
um, uh, say, say Reebok or Under Armour or Nike clothing, that's not uniform. Um, there is case law on this, uh, so you can't put that through. Yes, I appreciate that you need multiple um, items of gym clothing and trainers. However, um, it's not uniform. Um, so you need to get branded. If you get branded up into your gym, then you can put it through because it's uniform. Everyone's wearing the same stuff and it's uniform. So clothing, um, just to cover that off, if it's workwear that's uniform, it's protective clothing and safety gear, completely allowable. Otherwise, it's not. Uh, donations to charity, uh, that is a tax deductible expense. It sits kind of slightly different. If you're in a company, it sits on your P&L. If you are a sole trader or um, a partnership, it sits on your tax return rather than the P&L for your, uh, your business. Um, private car usage, right. You can use your private car for your business. You are best speaking to your accountant about this because depending on your circumstances, your profitability and things like that, it might be better sitting on your balance sheet. But generally, um, private cars, um, if you are, keep your receipts for your fuel and your mileage. The easiest way that my, our clients find it to track is just doing a simple, we have a simple Excel spreadsheet mileage calculator, or things like Playo, the expense app has a mileage uh, app section, which is really good. And basically the first 10,000 miles of your mileage that's wholly and exclusively for business use is a tax deductible expense of 45 pence per mile. So that's 10,000 miles at 45 pence per mile. Once you go over the 10,000 miles, then any mileage after that is at 25 pence per mile. So um, you have to ensure that you don't exceed that, otherwise you'll end up paying tax on the exceeded. To be honest, not many people exceed 10,000 miles in a year. It generally tends to be salespeople and they generally have company cars. Um, now, when I'm saying about 10,000 miles in a year, I mean the personal tax year, so from the 6th of April to the 5th of April. And use a simple Excel spreadsheet, you need to document all your journeys to and from and keep the seats in view. Um, so if you introduce any personal car into your business, again for sole traders and partnerships, um, you can have the cost of that car. So for example, if it's on finance, you could have the interest element of the finance. Um, you can have any costs, running costs. So for example, your service charges or replacement parts, uh, tyres and things like that, and um, also the car insurance. However, it does need adjusting for the element of private use. And what I mean by that is the element that you don't use for business. So for example, you could use it 60% of the time for running your business and 40% of the time for yourself. So that adjustment needs to be made. Um, we touched earlier on entertaining. I'll jump back to that now. Staff entertaining. If you've got employees, you are entitled to take them out once a year um, for a, a staff event and that is tax deductible and it's just that one event and the cost has to be £150 inclusive of VAT per head. If it exceeds that, the entire amount is tax deductible. So uh, it's not tax deductible. So you need to ensure that, you know, if you're taking your team out and £150 per head is quite a generous amount. Um, so that could be for your Christmas event or for a staff summer event. If you are a smaller team, you might say spouses, partners, friends are allowed. In that case, you say, so for example, it would be £150 per head, but then it would become £75 per head if there's um, an employee and their spouse attending. So that's any other entertainment for your team is not tax deductible because it's just entertaining, you're just taking them out. It's not wholly exclusive for the business and the law states you can't have tax relief for that. Additionally, if you do take them out, then it's a taxable benefit because you've taken them out for lunches and they've had a tax-free benefit of the business. It does seem trivial, but that is the law and that's how it works. Um, then, as I said, I go into entertaining, so I'll cover that now. Um, and with entertaining, generally it's not allowed. So business entertaining is not allowed. It used to be, it's not anymore, and it was a long time since it's been allowed. So it's not wholly exclusive for running a business. Now, I know as a business owner, that there is, I you know, I, I go out and meet clients for lunch, I meet potential um, business partners and contacts, um, and that might mean coffee and uh, it might be in a venue that's in a mutually convenient place, not necessarily in the office. Um, you can put it through the accounts, um, but you can't get tax relief on it because it's client entertaining, it's as simple as that. 
where it's slightly different is if you sponsored an event. If you had sponsorship and you sponsored an event and there was clearly advertisements, so banners, signage, things like that, that is tax deductible because it's advertising and marketing. However, anything that's spent on, say, food and drink at that event is not because, again, it's client entertainment. So you just need to be aware of that. You can put them through your accounts, you just won't get tax relief. Um, and I think that's it. I think I've covered everything off. I've got a bit of a list here and I'll just check I've got everything else. Um, I think travel costs generally, um, flights, whether it's first class, business class or not, they're entitled as long as it's wholly and exclusively for business. Trains, the same, taxes, the same. Commuting costs are not allowed. So if you're driving to the same place of work each day, your pre business premises, um, that's not allowed. But anything that's um, to uh, different places for running your business, absolutely. Parking costs are allowed as long as it's not your general place of work, unless it's a seasonal a parking pass. And I think that's I think that we've covered everything off there. Um, website running costs, I think, is the last one. So I hope that helps. And um, any queries or questions, put your comments in below. Please subscribe and help that helps with uh, give you some clarity on what is allowed and what is not allowed from a running cost point of view. Thanks.